Kevin Chaudhary. Last time we did uh, some questions which were uh, not so straightforward, slightly twisted. We will continue uh, doing uh, such questions. So far, I have uh, done the Simpsons stating that all the ordinates which are provided are parallel to the first ordinate or parallel to the reference axis. Right? The first ordinate used to be the reference axis. Like for example, in case of a tank that I gave you last time, uh, there was a bulkhead of the tank and uh, we had uh, known the ordinates which were parallel to the water level or uh, parallel to the reference axis or parallel to the tank top or parallel to the first ordinate. right? And uh, even uh, when we talked about the water plane area half breadth, all these ordinates were parallel to the reference axis. Like this was the reference axis. But now we are going to do a question we are going to do a question whereby the ordinates will be perpendicular to the reference axis. So for example, this is the end uh, bulkhead of a tank and we are given these ordinates which are perpendicular to the reference axis. Why I am saying uh, this is the reference axis because this is water level and in case I have to find out the depth of geometric centroid with respect to water level, then this has to be the reference axis. In other words, the ordinates which are given, say for example, 0, 5, 7, 8, 7, 5, 0, these vertical ordinates are perpendicular to the reference axis. See, they are perpendicular to the reference axis. In the previous uh, Simpsons formats or Simpsons tables, there was a column number 4 which was lever and lever was the distance of an ordinate from the first ordinate. The lever x was distance of any ordinate from the first ordinate. Now in this particular case the question does not arise of lever. So we will not have column number 4 here. So the columns will be y that is the ordinates 0, 5, 7, 8, 7, 5, 0. Number of segments 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 that means it is divisible by 2, it is even number of segments, it is also divisible by 3. We can do this uh, question by rule number 1 as well as rule number 2. Let's follow rule number 2. So, uh, Simpson's multiplier for rule number 2 is 1, 3, 3, 2, 3, 3, 1. So, it is 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1 and this ordinate being common for the two parts, what happens is instead of 1, I write 2, so it becomes 1, 3, 3, 2, 3, 3, 1. Okay. The third column is y dx, that is the product of 1 and 2. What I get is 0, 15, 21, 16, 21, 15, 0. The total is 88. So, uh, if I want to find out the area of uh, this bulkhead, that would be 3h by 8 into someone that is 88. So, that is 3 into 2.4 into 11. Uh, I have assumed that the uniform separation between the ordinate is 2.4 meters. That gives me 79.2 meters square. 79.2 meter square. So till here it so till here the calculations are same as I did before. But now there will be slight change because I told you there is no question of lever. Because lever is the distance of an ordinate from the first ordinate. So that question does not arise here. Because the ordinate and reference axis are not parallel to each other. They are perpendicular. So the fourth column I would write is for moment of area I would write y square dx. What is y square dx? This column is y dx. This column is y. The product of column number 1 and 3 is y square dx. So it is 0 here. 75, 147, 128, 147, 75, 0. So total is 572. 572 is the total of column number 4. You have to remember if the ordinates are perpendicular to the reference axis, then if I have to find out the moment of area, 
The column number 4 is y square dx that is the product of column number 1 and column number 3. In normal situation I would write the formula as 3h by 8 into some 572 but here please remember the ordinate is perpendicular to the reference axis by the original formula. I have to multiply this by 1 upon 2 and then only I will get the correct moment of area about the reference axis. So let us see how much it is. H is 2.4. So uh, this is 3 into 2.4 upon 16 into 572. So it is 7.2 into 572 equal to divide by 16. That gives me 257.4. 257.4. Meter cube. So this is the moment of area about the reference axis which is the water level. Depth of geometric centroid with respect to the water level or below the water level is moment of area that is 257.4 divided by the area itself that is 88 and that gives me 2.925 nearly 3 meters. So 2.925 is position of geometric centroid. This is how you find out the position of geometric centroid with respect to the reference axis where the reference axis is perpendicular to the ordinates. So we will do uh, one more similar question in this category whereby a uh, shape is given like there is a curve which is given with respect to x axis and y axis. You might be given the diagram or you might be uh, given the description whereby you have to draw the diagram. And the curve would be something like this. And you have to find out the position of the geometric centroid with respect to the y axis and with respect to the x axis. So let us say uh, the ordinates are 12. 11, 9, 7 and 0. You have to find out as to what is the distance of geometric centroid from the x-axis and the y-axis. Uh, what we do is we will write the ordinate starting from 12. Why we started from here is because we have to find out the position of centroid from this ordinate itself. So, so 12, 11, 9, 7, 0. 12, 11, 9, 7, 0. Right? So number of segments is even. So I will use rule number one. One, four, two, four, one. This is y. This is Simpson's multiplier. Y dx. Whether the reference axis is parallel to the ordinates or reference axis is perpendicular to the ordinates, the first three columns are going to be the same. So the first column, ordinate, second, Simpson's multiplier, and third one is the product of the two. sum is 102. So there is no problem about the first three. And now let us concentrate on the x-axis. We have to find out the position of geometric centroid from the x-axis. So I would say that if this is the reference axis, the ordinates are parallel to the reference axis. So the format is going to be the fourth column as x, 0, h, 2, h, 3, h, 4, h and Thereafter, the product of the two, that is y, x, dx, 0, 44, h, 36, h, 84, h, and 0, 164, h. So, I can straight away find out the position of geometric centroid from the x-axis and that would be h by 3 into 164, h divided by 102 h by 3 102 so h by 3 gets cancelled the denominator is area and the numerator is moment of area about the x-axis so 164 h let's take the value of h as 2.4 so 164 into 2.4 divided by 102 that gives me 3.859 3.859 meters. 
is the distance of geometric centroid from the x-axis. To find out the distance of geometric centroid from the y-axis, please remember the ordinates become perpendicular to the reference axis. And I told you the uh, key for that is y square dx, right? y square dx means we need to multiply column number 1 and 3. So it becomes 144, 484, 162, 196, 0, 986. So 986 will help us to give the moment of area about the y-axis. So moment of area is half into h by 3 into 986. That is half into 2.4 upon 3 into 986. Six. It gives me 394.4. This is 394.4. And the area was 2.4 upon 3 into 102. That is uh, 0 0.8 into 102. Area was 81.6 meters square. 81.6 meters square. So 394.4 divided by 81.6 gives me 4.833 4.833 so distance of the geometric centroid from y axis is 4.833 and that of from the x axis which we found earlier was 3.859 meters so sometimes you might be given a question like this whereby you know, uh, you have to find out the position of geometric centroid with respect to x and y axis. That means you may be required to use the two formats of the Simpsons in one format. The reference axis is parallel to the ordinates, like uh, x axis is parallel to the ordinates. And another format, look at column number 1, 2, 3 and the last column, whereby the ordinates are perpendicular to the reference axis. So when the ordinates are perpendicular to the reference axis, on top the key is y square dx and when you find out the moment of area, don't forget to multiply by half.